Keeping a portfolio of recent work is essential, and now you can generate it in three different ways. First, there's hard copy, i.e. printed copies. Printed copies of your work can actually be handed to someone, and that's especially important if any of your work has been printed commercially. I'm not talking about printing it on your own laser or inkjet printer. It's proof of experience and of successful printing, so it's potentially worth a lot. Anytime some of your work is printed, ask the printer beforehand to keep a few sheets back for you. If you can, get some of the complete uncut press sheets if they're not too big, as these will not only show your work, but also the trims, the color bars, and so on that were part of the final PDF. This quite literally gives a prospective client or employer the whole picture, and it tells them you're not only capable of good design, you can prep it for print with everything the printer needs. And of course, if the client doesn't know this stuff is important, you can always point it out. Also get a few copies of the finished product. This is especially important if it's been folded. A press sheet won't look like the finished thing, even if it's a poster, and it can't show folding or gluing. For that, you need a copy of the end result. If it's a book cover, and you also happen to have it wrapped around a book, even better. But the cover on its own will show your work. Don't let the printer give you just one. You need more than you think you need. Tell them beforehand that you'd like at least 10. You don't know how long you're going to want to use them as a marketing tool. The second kind of portfolio you should create is an interactive PDF. This is typically a multi-page digital version that you can put onto a memory stick or similar, and it allows anyone to look at it on their own computer. To read a PDF requires Adobe Acrobat Reader, but that's free, and most people already have it on their systems. To create a PDF requires one of the main page layout programs such as Adobe InDesign. If you do use Adobe InDesign to create your portfolio, you can add all kinds of interactivity. This not only helps in navigating through the final document, it also shows that you know something about building interactivity, which is a good thing in itself. The kind of things you can include are hyperlinks, buttons, and movies. The hyperlink feature alone means you can build an interactive table of contents. If you do this, remember to put a link on each page that will take you back to the contents, or people will have to scroll through page by page whenever they want to go somewhere new. The return link should be placed on the master pages, which control the background appearance of everything except the table of contents itself. I'll show you how to do this later. You can also add features like slideshows and animation, but this either requires you to export as a Flash document, or you can cheat using a downloaded script called SWF Presenter, which is available on many websites. This fools InDesign into allowing features like slideshows and animation to be exported as a PDF. I'll show you how to install and use this script later on. However, while SWF Presenter does allow you to export that stuff as a PDF, the way it does so is by converting them into Flash movies. So they still won't run on iPads and some other Mac hardware. If you need it to run on one of these, it must be a PDF through and through, with no Flash content at all. Either way, the big advantage to this kind of portfolio is the whole thing can be put onto a memory stick. These are cheap, and it shouldn't stretch your budget too far to consider sending one to prospective clients, even knowing that you may not get it back.